Good day all. I wrap Stephen with your market wrap up for your financial markets on this Wednesday, the 24th of June, 2020, and we're about 5.40 p.m. Central Time. So we walk into a day where we have the president threaten more tariffs through the Office of Trade for $3.1 billion. We have a day where Joe Biden's got the largest lead he's had in the polls for the presidency. And we have a day where all of a sudden, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut are saying, if you travel to their states, from any of the states that they have deemed high risk because of the increase in COVID, you have to go into a 14-day uh, quarantine. If you don't, you are subject to fines. I don't know what this means for travel. Don't know what it means for hotels. Why would anybody from one of those high-risk states even think they can go to New York and stay in a hotel if the hotels are open? the hotel is going to probably report and say, hey, you're from uh, Arizona. That's a high risk state. You got to stay in your room two weeks. Market came tumbling down off that news. What surprises me is we have all been reading about COVID. You know, it's just funny when the market decides to pick up on something. I think the event, obviously, was when the uh, governor of New York came out and made this statement. I think that took the market by surprise and you started a correction in things. Okay, they always start out of somewhere, so we'll see what happens. The Robin Hood traders today, well, they weren't able to turn the market late in the day. Metal markets, again, we noticed that the gold, while it tried to get up to the 1800 level, actually came back and had a breakdown, same in the silver. Again, we're seeing that pattern when the stock market breaks hard, gold isn't really able to hold up. What is holding up though, has been the bonds and the notes. And what's held up is the dollar index. Now the yen gave up some ground, but we'll cover all this. As you can see, we're, we're for the week, and we have time to go. This has been a, a phenomenal quarter for stocks, the quarter. June is not ahead of itself. It's pretty flat now. Gave up all the, all the good gains that it was having, but we'll come to that. As you can see right now, the market is starting to challenge in on that number that I was telling you. What you don't want to see is a close under 2982. It would be the first time that you'd have a pattern of lower highs and a pattern where you have a close that's under a previous week's close since this whole rally began in March it'd be a pause in the market at a minimum, important. Bigger support in the market, the 28.50, 28.64 level, right in there is the bigger support. What is the market pattern? There isn't one. If you really look, you're trading in sideways action that I've been telling you, just over to the 3200 level, just over to 29, and you're just marching along. What's the swing line pattern? Not a trend. You have a higher high, and now a lower and low. That is not a trend. What number is the market fighting between? The 200-day average and the 18, and you stalled out against that. In my charting course, I teach how important the 18-day average is, why, and go through all the explanations with you. If you're a subscriber to my research, I'm not talking the free YouTube, I'm talking on our websites and that. My charting course normally sells without what I'm about to say for $179.95. From now through July 1st, $99.95. Six hours of videos, all the uh, charting software you need, access to my daily information, you get it. Get my written comments. The commentary alone for that month, $60. So it's a real bargain. But you gotta subscribe first to one of my products, then buy the course afterwards. How do you do that? You subscribe, you watch the end of the video, that you'll be the morning subscriber or the ETF video. Right at the end, it's gonna tell you about the course and there's a discount code. Put it in. As long as you buy the subscription first, you know I'm gonna honor it anyways. I'll just come in and fix it for you. But we're about to be maybe challenging the 200 day average. Now we did it back here and we had a pretty successful test of everything. We came up, but truly, we never made new highs. So the market is sort of fighting with itself right here. 
when we look at Bollinger Bands, we're caught in a pipe. Now, it's not as narrow as I normally like to see them, but can you see this market's just starting to drift sideways here? When that happens, it's not uncommon that you don't get a lot of follow through up or down. You just start meandering back and forth, and that's what I'm suspecting is happening, because right now, if you fell, I look at the 200-day average down to 29.85, two very important numbers. When I look at the slow stochastics, they are drifting down. So no trend, the bias down since the market's under the 18-day average, and support under us at 30.13 to 29.85. In the NASDAQ, the pattern is one of a higher high, lower low. Now, you know what I believe. I teach here in my course that the first challenge of a Bollinger Band is often where the pros take money off the table. I've seen this over the years, I've come to believe it. I don't try to quantify it, I, I look at it on a chart and that's how I analyze it. And you could see you backed off. I am not saying traders go short there and they're looking for the break. That's not how you use Bollinger Bands. How they use it is, I think, that be it the algos or traders that are sophisticated with it, understand that is get me out, let me take some money off the table. Now understand that also, trading in futures, spiders and ETFs is not investing like you would in Amazon, Tesla, whatever you want to call your investment. That's different. This is trading. There's a very big difference. Understand the theories. Momentum, though, has turned down. No trend. I wouldn't be surprised if you fight around that 18-day average. I don't see anything to do there. The market that stayed bearish, and I said it yesterday, it was the survivor. I thought it was going to be the Russell. It wasn't. It was the Dow. And it's paid you off in spades as the market has let go to the downside. The trend is down. The bias is down. Support comes in at the combination of the 100-day average and the Bollinger Band. The Bollinger Band's right in front of it, so that's the better support. Resistance still, the 18-day average. To negate this downtrend, you have to get back over uh, 26,294. In the Russell, what it did today, I thought it was gonna do yesterday, and I did not think it was gonna get up yesterday over this high. I was wrong. Higher high, lower low, bias down. Again, look at the support, the 100-day average and the Bollinger Band. Momentum down as well, so nothing friendly there. The VIX held the first challenge of the combination of the 100-day average and the 18, bounced away. Again, the importance of the 18-day average. Now, the rally today got up to 31.46 over this high, so you're not trending. You had a swing line downtrend that was never how do I say this? Um, the filter kept you away from taking it. When you have the bias up and the swing lines down, they counter each other the way I teach charting. So market was coming down, I'd look for the 18-day average support, it hit it, it also hit the 100. In the T-bond market, the market is trying to embed. So both numbers, and let's get rid of tonight. This is Wednesday's close, both numbers over 80, not the day before. So. Both over 80, and tonight they're both over 80. It takes three days in a row for both numbers to stay over 80, three full days, then I call it embedded or locked in in a trend. I'm also telling you that I trust nothing when you start these pipes and you're just trading back and forth in them. If the market follows through, I look for the resistance at 179.21, but I am telling you, you're right now overbought in an uptrend. The trend is broken if you take out 176.13. The 10-year note, the trend is up. It's the same thing. Our, we can't count today, so we go back to Wednesday's close, both numbers over 80, but they were both over 80 on Tuesday. So I got Tuesday and Wednesday, not Monday. Tomorrow, this market can be embedded if it, both numbers close like that. Again, that's very important because it tells me that the pros will buy all the breaks until that's lost. But this sideways action always bugs me because I don't think the market's going to go anywhere in it other than bounce around. Dollar index, we have a higher high, lower low scenario, flat momentum, nothing in a trend. The euro yesterday got up high enough, did it, to break through. And now the question is, what kind of pattern do we have? We have a lower low, a bounce. We're not anything. 
Absolutely nothing. I need this market to set up a pattern. We'll see what it does. I'm still long-term friendly the euro, bearish the dollar because of the chart action, not what's in my brain, from the weekly charts, okay? In the Japanese yen, you lost the bullish embedded reading. What does that often lead to? If you don't get it back immediately, when did we lose it? We, uh, we did not lose it on the close of uh, Wednesday. I, I know it's Wednesday, but remember, this is Thursday's trade. So you have to let it go through everything to see if it stays lost. But it's a big warning signal, and that's why I like to do this after 5 p.m., that momentum is waning in this market. Traders aren't rushing. You know, normally you'd hear about this COVID and all these other things, they'd be buying the end. They didn't. Pay attention when things like that happen. Bitcoin stepped out of its uptrend. So now, you're stuck, as I said, in this 18-day average in the pipe, and you're just not following through. It looked yesterday like maybe you could follow through up here. Now can you get down to the lower band? I wouldn't be interested in it one way or the other. Brent versus WTI, the two August contracts, sort of drifting at the $2 mark, but what do I teach here and say? Doesn't mean I'm right when I say it. The first challenge of a Bollinger Band is where pros should, I think, take money off the table. If you were sitting at my side and paying me $1,000 an hour to teach you, and yeah, that's what I'd want if you're gonna sit with me, I'd be pounding it into your head. That's where you take money off the table, because otherwise you're doing this. Doesn't mean it always works, but you didn't do too bad there. You certainly did pretty good over here. You play the percentages. Now, let's assume you didn't want to get out of all your position. You ever hear the word stop orders? Tight stops? There's many ways to play it. Momentum down, you've lost your way in the trend, you're back to the 18-day average, now it's gonna begin searching for direction again. Same identical thing in WTI. My God, it even happened in the gasoline. No trends left in these markets. Nat gas is the trend. It's been bearish, staying down, and still falling. So this market's been the trend giver. Will it be able to get as low as the lower bull in Japan? Could. You know, there's no reason to be bullish. This thing's just locked into a bear trend, and until trends end, they don't end. So I want you to just remember, if you pick one of my research and you subscribe on our website to it, you can go there and you'll see it's in the research area, the morning subscription video or the paid uh, subscriber video, I'm talking the paid research. If you wanna then buy our charting course, we're discounting it by $80 to $99.95. It'll include the charting software, six hours of videos, access to my written research, you get a real package out of this. So, you might wanna take advantage of it. I'm Ira Epstein, you have a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow.